Section 4.2 on page 157 talks about homogeneous linear equations, the general solution. Given ay double prime plus py prime plus cy equal g of t, in which a does not equal to zero, this is a linear second order differential equation with, equation with constant coefficients a, b, and c. The initial conditions in ODE must match. This right here is called the external force. If G of T equals zero, if the external force equals zero, we say this equation right here is a homogeneous equation. Now, consider Consider I don't like that consider. Here we go. Consider Y prime plus PY equals zero. Assuming this is a constant. If this P is a constant, then one way of doing this problem is to say dy dt equals negative P times Y, dy over Y equals negative P dt, and this is a separable equation, first order. If I integrate, I'll get natural log of Y equal negative PT plus C, and Y will equal e to the negative pt plus c, which is e to the negative pt times e to the c. Assuming that's some constant, I'll get some y equal to some c2, if you will, e to the negative pt. That's the solution. Now, or, if I have a linear differential equation with constant coefficients if I let y equal e to the RT be a solution just like that then if it's a solution if I take a derivative of that y prime is R e to the RT and if I substitute those in that will read R e to the RT plus p e to the rt equals 0, factor e to the rt out, that's r plus p equals 0. Of course, e to the rt can never equal 0. So it must be that r plus p equals 0, which means r equal negative p, and the solution would be y equal some multiple of e to the negative pt. And notice... I get the same solution. So, this right here, something we're going to talk about a lot, this is called the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. That's very important. In terms, we're going to talk about that. Now, given a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero a linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients if you let y equal e to the rt be a solution then the characteristic this book calls it auxiliary equation same thing characteristic equation is given by a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero which is a quadratic equation we have three cases the solutions to a quadratic equation, either you have two distinct solutions, and they're right here. If the auxiliary equation has distinct real roots, r1 and r2, then y1 equal e to the r1t, and y2 equal e to the r2t are solutions of equation 2. This is equation 2, right here. And y equals c1 e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2t is the general solution basically 
any combination of eta the R1P and eta the R2P would be a solution. If those two are repeated, you could get one solution, that's in this section as well, or you could get two complex solutions, that's the next section. So I'd like to look at a few problems, and I want to make sure that we see this. This is on page 164. So if I look at problem number four for starters, this is a second order differential equation, linear differential equation with constant coefficients. The key, we would let y equal e to the r2 be a solution. I need a derivative and a second derivative. y prime will be r e to the r t, and y double prime will be r squared e to the r t. If I substitute those in, r squared e to the r t minus r e to the r t minus 2 e to the rt equals 0, factor e to the rt out, and you will get r squared minus r minus 2 equal to 0, e to the rt cannot equal 0, it must be that r minus 2 into r plus 1 equals 0, so this is the auxiliary of heuristic equation, here we get r equal 2 and r equal negative 1. There are two distinct solutions. It's a good habit to start writing this, even though we're not there yet. Any combination of those will be solution. And the general solution is y equal c1 times e to the 2t plus c2 e to the negative t. And you could write e to the negative t first and e to the 2t after. It makes no difference. I'm going to look at problem number six, same idea. This is a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. I'm going to let y equal e to the r to be a solution. y prime will be r e to the r t, and y double prime will be r squared e to the r t. So this becomes r squared e to the r t minus 5 r e to the r t plus 6 e to the r t zero factor e to the rt out you get r squared minus 5r plus 6 equal to zero e to the rt can never equal zero it must be that r minus 3 into r minus 2 equals zero so we get r to be 3 r2 so e to the 3t or e to the 2t would be any combination of those would be a solution later on we'll talk about what the fundamental set is c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the 3t would be the general solution and i'd like to look at the third let me see can i squish that here that would be nice if i could if not it doesn't matter here we go number 10 the same deal i'm gonna let y equal e to the r to be a solution i need a derivative and a second derivative y prime will be r e to the r t and y double prime will be r squared e to the rt. So r squared e to the rt minus r e to the rt minus 11 e to the rt will equal 0. Factor e to the rt out. r squared minus r minus 11 equals 0. e to the rt can never equal 0. It must be that r squared minus r minus 11 equals 0. That doesn't factor, but that's okay. Algebra. You know how to use a quadratic formula to complete the square. I try to complete the square. Take half of the middle number, which is one half, and square it. This becomes r minus one squared equals 44, 45 over four. R will equal one plus or minus square root of 45. That's nine. That's three radical five over two, and r will equal Oh, that's good enough. We need to get a common denominator. So I could say here, well, look, e to the 1 plus 3 radical 5 over 2 t, e to the 1 minus 3 radical 5 over 2 t, any combination of those would be a solution. Uh, shouldn't have squished that, but looks 
better this way, and y equals c1 e to the 1 plus 3 radical 5 over 2 t. plus C2E to the 1 minus 3 radical 5 over 2T would be the general solution. On the next problem, the only difference they give us initial conditions to find C1 and C2 to find an explicit solution. The same deal, this is a linear differential equation, second order with constant coefficients. Any order, this will work. Third, fourth, you let y equal e to the rt be a solution. I need a derivative and a second derivative. y times r e to the rt, and y double time will be r squared e to the rt. So this is r squared e to the rt plus r e to the rt equals zero. Factor r e to the r. Let's always write it that way. Probably you can see it better. e to the rt times r into r plus one. Zero. e to the rt can never equal 0, it must be that r equals 0 and negative 1, and we do recognize e to the 0 is actually 1 and 0 t, that's 1, right? So we could say here that y equal c1, e to the 0 t is just 1, plus c2 e to the negative t, that's the general solution. But now that we have the initial conditions, we would say, well, let's see. y of 0 is actually c1 plus c2, and that is 2. And y prime, let's see, what's y prime? If I take a derivative of this, that is 0 minus c2 e to the negative t. And I know that y prime of 0 is negative c2, and that is a 1. So C2 equal negative 1. Negative 1 plus C2 equal 2. So C2 equal a 3. And my explicit solution will be Y equal... Uh, okay, did I do that? Okay. C1 minus 1. So C1 is 3. That would be 3 minus e to the negative t would be the solution to this in which you take one derivative plus another derivative add them together and you get the solution which is zero and the second case to consider what if you have repeated roots what if you factor and you get just one solution then you say e to the r t well it's not r1 because r e to the r t to really get them to distinguish you really need to multiply that by t we'll talk later on about what it means to be linearly independent and the general solution is y equals c1 times e to the r t plus c2 times t e to the r t so if i get something that is r minus a squared equal to zero that means r equal a i'm only getting one value such as number 2 and 20. Let's do those. Number 2, if I let y equal e to the rt. And how does that work? That works only if we have a linear differential equation we do with constant coefficients. Well, I need two derivatives. y prime equal e to the rt times r. Uh, getting carried away now. y prime equal r e to the rt. And y double prime equal r squared e to the rt. So this is r squared e to the rt plus 6r e to the rt plus 9 e to the rt equals 0. Factor e to the rt out, you get r squared plus 6r plus 9, which is a perfect squared trinomial. e to the rt cannot equal 0. It must be that r plus 3 squared equals 0. That means r equal negative 3 is the solution, but that's only one of them. Anytime that happens, you modify the solution by saying e to the negative 3t, e to the negative 3t, multiplied by t, and y equal 
C1 e to the negative 3t plus C2 t e to the negative 3t would be the general solution. And if they give us initial conditions, we find C1 and C2, and that's basically it. So the same thing here, I see a second order linear differential equation, equation with constant coefficients. I let y equal e to the rt be a solution, y prime is r e to the rt, and y double prime is r squared e to the rt, r squared e to the rt minus 4 r e to the rt plus 4 e to the rt equals 0 factor e to the rt out, you will look at r squared minus 4r plus 4 equals 0. So e to the rt can never equal 0. It must be that r minus t squared equals 0. So r equal 2 would be the solution. And that means e to the 2t, e to the 2t, to distinguish those you multiply by t. And the general solution is y equal c1 e to the 2t plus t e to the 2t would be the solution. But now that they gave me initial conditions, I'm going to find those. I'm going to say y of 1 is c1 e to the 2 plus c2 e to the 2. Oh, I forgot c2. Look at that, all the excitement. And in this case, that equals a 1. And if I take a derivative, y prime, wouldn't that be 2c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the 2t plus 2c2t e to the 2t? So y prime of 1 is going to be 2c2 e2 plus c2 e2 plus 2c2 e2 okay I think I messed it up let's see what here we go equal 1 if I multiply the top equation by a negative 2 that becomes negative 2c1 e2 minus c2 e2 equal a negative 2 and if I add those those cancel out and those cancel out I'll get 2c2 e2 equal negative 1. So c2 equal negative 1 over e to the second. And if I come back to the first equation, not very pleasant, but it's doable. c1 e to the 2 plus c2 is really negative 1 over 2 e to the 2 times e to the 2 equal 1. Those cancel out. c1 e to the 2 equal 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves, so C1 is 3 over 2 e to the 2, so my general solution become now explicit, and I would say y equal C1, which is 3 halves, now e to the 2t minus 2, I could combine them, you don't have to, minus 1 over 2 times t e to the 2t minus 2 and the book might even factor the 2 out you don't have to do that that would be a fine solution and there's the homework on this section one through eleven if they ever odd and thirteen through nine